Hey guys, welcome back again to the Landco podcast. Um, get a chat about one of, we're going to chat with Matt Lynch about one of his listings, 107 acres down in Fulton County. So we're going to do a property discussion on that listing. So again, Landco podcast, property discussion on the uh, Fulton County 107. So let me bring in Matt and, uh, Matt and I just did a recording on the whitetail kind of activity report. So I'm going to spit a few of these out tonight. So Matt, thanks for uh, kind of hanging around to do a few of them tonight. Yeah, thanks, man. So uh, this property is down in by Astoria Ballpark. Yeah, yeah, just on the west uh, west side of it. Actually, it's the very southwest tip of Fulton County as it uh, butts up to Schuyler County. Got it. Um, so give us a rundown. It just kind of like you know we can get into the hunting and the fishing and all that stuff, but give us kind of a uh, a rundown of the layout of the property. Sure. Um, you know, the entrance of the property, uh, you cross over the Sugar Creek uh, going into a big bottom. It's roughly 25 acres that was once enrolled in CRP uh, that they've kind of the, let the program expire, but it's still great bottom ground. Uh, then you come up uh, to some old building sites that, uh, you know, great location that overlooks uh, one of the first two lakes on the property. Um, and as you cruise through that, like I said, you, you totally are bordered by the Sugar Creek. Uh, you come up to another pond that's on there. That's another, you know, an acre at least. Uh, and the rest of the property is just really cool. It's a lot of big wide trails that we've cleared. It's uh, some thick timber. There's a big cedar forest on the property that uh, really makes it unique uh, in a lot of different ways compared to some other places that I've seen. Cool. Um, what do you want to dive into first? I've got some uh, trail kind of trail pictures that, that you gave me. I've got food plot pictures. What do you want to talk about first? Sure. I mean, we can start out with, um, you know, the food plot pictures, first of all. Okay. Uh, you know, when I took this listing on, um, it was really just a blank canvas. You know, you, you drive into it, like I said, there was 25 acres. It was once in CRP. The owners, um, because of some family um, things that have happened, uh, let the program expire. They've never re-enrolled it. So that front part, as you come into the property, is just a big flat bottom ground. Uh, could easily be put into, um, you know, it could be re-enrolled into CRP. It could be turned into standing corn, standing beans very easily. But what we did to make it more attractive for the deer hunting on the properties, we went in and, and made three separate food plots uh, on different areas of the farm uh, to kind of bring the deer in, see what we were working with on the property. So you can't, the one downside of the software is you can't see the pictures we're looking at, but I'm looking at, it looks like um, some sort of biologic field with a tree in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, is that yeah, what that, that is? is? Uh, yeah, that is kind of the southeast tip of the property. Um, butts up kind of very close to a big ag field uh, behind it. There's very thick bedding uh, just north and northwest of there. That's, you know, very close. It's within 100 yards of the big cedar uh, forest that I told you. And that's several acres of just straight cedars uh, throughout there. So, you know, when it comes time, when it gets really windy out or the weather gets kind of, you know, inclement, uh, those deer hide out and they're like crazy. There's tons of deer sign through there. Any uh, movement that we've seen from the deer being out there, uh, they're coming in and out of this cedar forest. So really cool nice. setup. Um, let me pull up a property map so we can kind of figure out where um, that 25 acres is you're talking about. Um, Cause sure. it's, it's right when you cross the bridge, right? Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Right, maybe one second. Let me try to pull that up. Um, and while I'm pulling that up, you've, you know the guys that are kind of hunting out there. What have they been seeing? Yeah, we um, I had a very uh, special friend, um, you know, who's in the hunting industry. I invited him to come out here and, you know, hunt for a few days, see what's been going on out there. Uh, he was out there for a few days. And in that, he saw definitely a couple of shooters that he filled me in on, just uh, didn't come within range. You know, he, we don't have uh, many stand sets out there that we plan for him. So, he was kind of moving around with his ground blind, just trying to, to get on him and never could meet up with him, but saw a couple of really nice ones. Um, and even recently had uh, a tour out there. We did a showing and uh, there was another giant, um, you know, cutting out of that pine forest. So definitely seen some big ones out there. Just, um, you know, we're not uh, really hunting anything hard out there. So not, uh, you know, no one that we can say we've got, a, we can't say we've got a big buck down yet, but we're seeing big ones out there. Cool. Um, okay, so I have the uh, Google map up. So it looks like, what is that, North Taylor Lane? 
um, which is what a dead end road to it. It is. It actually dead ends um, right where this property starts. You know, the okay. bridge that takes you to the creek. And so you cross that, and that's that big twenty acre field you're talking about right there in the open, like right away. Right, twenty five acres is that that whole bottom ground there. So um, I'm going to come back to that in a minute because I'm that field kind of uh, intrigues me. But if I look at the sure. south side of this property, which again you can't see this, but it looks like there's you know I can't tell if those are ridge tops or bottoms. I think they're ridge tops, but it looks like they're kind of open. Is there anything you could do up there? Yeah. So the owners have owned this place for a long time, and and like I said, they recently had uh, 25 acres in CRP. That was you know few years ago that they let that expire but at one time you know in the early years that they owned this there was over 60 acres um of ground that was tillable on this piece so there's a lot of open areas just over the years that they've let kind of grow up um you know with just it looks like thick overgrown pasture almost in some areas but uh, we've gone through and cleared some of those to make big wide trails but they're it's really cool because you go from big thick you know cedars or big thick timber to these kind of open areas where these deer are walking through um, to get from point A to point B. Well, oh, that's cool. That'd give you some uh, a lot of kind of uh, opportunities to create bigger food plots too, if you wanted to. Absolutely. We, uh, like I said, we put three in just in a few um, select areas that we chose. But I mean, you could easily just do a little bit more clearing and make you know a couple more, or you could expand on the ones that we already have there to make some bigger plots. Um, while I got this open, I'm going to zoom out. Because I know the area fairly well. We had a farm on the opposite side of the story for a long time that mm -hmm. Peter hunted. Um, yeah. This would be south, southwest of it. But I just zoomed out here, and man, the just the terrain, this whole area. I mean, I'm probably four or five miles wide now, and it's all timber with little cove fields. I mean, the whole area looks good. Yeah, it's an, it's really incredible, and um, the one one of the main things I like about it is unlike some of these other properties that are all thick timber, you know, some of those are real steep ridges. You know, they're hard to navigate through. You can't walk around them too well. The entire property, I mean, you can walk down the big trails if you do get in the timber. It's all very, you know, gentle slopes. Um, you can easily walk through the entire property and not feel like you're, you know, having to climb uphill or struggle to get around it. Yeah. And there's, it looks like just to the uh, east, there's just one giant ag field. That's kind of nice. Right. There's a, there's a big ag field um, to the east. There's some to the south and uh, some of the kind of, I believe it's the southwest. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let me pull that out. I want to pull up a picture on that 25 acres because um, just from the, the pictures, it looks like there's so many options there. I pulled it up before. Yeah. I mean, so you could, there we go. So you could re enroll that stuff. I mean, you'd have to do a little work to get rid of some of those cottonwoods and stuff, right? But yeah, and it's actually, if you get on the property, the work that would need to be done, it's really minimal. There's a few trees that have grown up in the middle of that that need to be cut down. But, you know, since there's not been any manipulation to that uh, or, you know, altering to that area, it should be pretty easy to re enroll. But me, with my deer hunter mentality, I would go in and probably plant. Um, some sort of standing crops in that bottom and just let the deer filter out of some of those, um, you know, creek bottoms up into that field and, you know, be able to hunt them from that standpoint. I mean, because that's a giant field. Most of it looks pretty flat. Is it all flat? It's very flat. The entire thing is very flat. And you could just go in there and spray it. I mean, is it pretty, uh, is it just what, brome grass down there? Short grass or is yeah, it all? It's just, no, it's, um, I mean, maybe four foot tall, just overgrown, you know, weeds, grasses that have come in after the program expired. Um, you know, one good spraying and, uh, you know, mowing and tilling up. I mean, to make that into, you know, tillable acreage during roll it, uh, whatever you got to do. I mean, the maintenance on it would be very little. To it get looks it. like it's mowed in the picture that I'm looking at, but maybe not. It's hard to tell. What's that? It, it looks like it's mowed. Like it looks like it's uh, someone. Yeah, it's like I said, it's. um. It's right. It's just all very flat. And like I said, it's just, it's about three to four foot tall grass through there. And we've got a big trail through the middle of it to kind of get you through the middle of the property. But I mean, a good spray and a mow. And I mean, it's going to look like a big giant couple of football fields down there with how, how nice it is. Okay. That would be awesome to get 15 acres of beans down there. Oh, that would be incredible. That would change everything. All that, all that, uh, 
you know, with the Sugar Creek right there, all that timber that runs along there. I mean, those those deer cruise along those edges all the time. So I mean, you're just gonna have deer pouring into that field if that's what the owner decided to do. Cool. Let's talk about the uh, lakes. So yeah. we'll pull up a picture over here. The lake. There's what kind of a chain of lakes there. There's there's two there's two um, decent sized ponds I would call them I mean they're each you know over an acre in size you know maybe one's closer to two, uh, but I mean I can't tell you you know what kind of fish you're going to pull out of there um, on a regular basis. All I know is you know to kind of be able to tell people how the fishing is. I went out there and threw my pole in the water for you know half an hour one day and I pulled out bass after bass after bass. I mean they were hitting every single cast so. Yes. Um, if it's, you know, just, you know, taking the family out there for some fun, you know, times, you know, riding trails or hunting or fishing. I mean, especially that, I mean, you can easily go out there and catch fish like crazy if that's what you want to do. Yeah. And lakes are easy to kind of um, manipulate if you have a couple of years to do it. So, oh, yeah, um, sure. okay. Um, what else we need to talk about? Um, I did find a picture of that. What do you call it? Sugar Creek there? It is Sugar Creek. Uh, so let me see if I can pull that up. I mean, that's a that's a big year-round flowing body of water there. So there's always going to be a, an available water source for the wildlife out there. That's for sure. Okay. Well, uh, let me pull up a few of these uh, group pictures of this guy. Yeah. And I'll have to kind of explain these to you. There's two or three of them since you can't see them. Um, this is kind of a dark one. I'm taking it uh, what 5:40 in the morning. Uh, is, that the, uh, small is that the nighttime one? The what? Is that the one that's at nighttime? It's yes. Kind of the, yeah. So that deer actually it looks like a stud. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, but he's uh, he's headed back down towards the creek, um, probably going back to bed. He's going to use that as his you know route back to bed. And um, he said he's a stud. And we've got a couple of pictures of some decent ones out there, but not as big as some of the ones we've just seen in person while being out there. I know personally driving into this place, uh, I've seen three deer on, you know, a couple of separate occasions all over the 170 inch range, just, you know, within a hundred yards of the entrance going into this place and they ran into the property. So I can definitely vouch that there's some giants in the area. Um, even if our cameras, you know, our few cameras that we have out there haven't picked them up yet. For sure. Well, that area is, um, you know, if you're looking for a hunting ground, it's not going to get much better than that area. Right. In general. Right. Um, I just put another picture up. It looks like a, a daytime picture. Um, I don't know if it's the same deer or not. It's a small, taken on October 16th. It's another good deer. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, the genetics out there that we're seeing. Lots of deer with splits, whether, you know, G2s, G3s. We're seeing, you know, that's a definitely a common trait that I'm seeing in lots of trail cam pictures is uh, lots of splits on these deer's racks, which is really cool because if you let these deer get to the right age and they've got that kind of, uh, you know, genes running through them, you're going to start to see some giants, you know, you know, with the 12 point plus kind of frames on them. So yeah. that's exciting, you know, especially whoever ends up getting this place, if they manage it right, they can go out there and kill some giants over the years. I want to bring one up and this is the world divorce trail cam picture. <laughs> um, I'm going to, I didn't upload it. So I'm going to use my computer screen here. So give me a second, but it looks like it's, uh, let me find it. Like as blurry as could be. Maybe so that's the one I was talking about earlier. That's the real big one. Um, Oops, sorry, I had the graphic there. Um, let me find that because you can, you have no idea what it is, but it looks enormous. Yeah, and that's I think that's the one I was referring to earlier. I think the one that you had up earlier was probably the one with a a split on his G two or G three. That was a nice three year old. Okay, this one, um, the the real blurry one. Yeah, that's a stud. And, so I was uh, fumbling around trying to get that, but I finally got it. Um, yeah, that's a stud and. Yeah, you have uh, no idea what it is, but he looks like a beast. He is a beast, and it could be um, one of the two deer that uh, you know our our guy that we had hunting out there laid eyes on. He said it was there was a big, wide one of just a monster, and then there was another uh, time that um, he said he saw one just a, a giant, tall frame on him. So it could be you know one of those two. It's hard to tell from that one trail cam picture. Like I said, we do our best to kind of put them in spots where we think they're cruising through and. Uh, he was moving just a little bit too fast to give us a good picture of what he, what exactly he is. Uh, that wasn't that was about a month ago. Yeah, you know we we really haven't checked cameras um, in probably close to a month. We haven't been out there. Um, I said it's one of those properties that you know we we go out there and we do a showing every now and again. Uh, otherwise, we kind of just 
let it be so that um, we can try and get some better trail cam pictures. So with the rut going on, it wouldn't surprise me if the next time we check these cameras and as these deer get back on foods, they're using those food plots and we maybe get a couple of giants in front of these uh, cameras we have out there. Yep, cool. Um, so last thing I want to talk about the entrance is um, I think it's cool. Uh, some people have kind of seen it as problematic, but it's a, what, a private dead end road to a bridge. Is that how it works? It is. And I mean, this is one of those uh, bridges that I think, you know, the entrance into this property years ago, this was a road that probably went through the property um, out to another main road. So, I mean, this is a very sophisticated um steel bridge that goes across this i mean it's huge uh it has some age to it i definitely believe the structure on it is secure i mean there's giant i-beams below it that we've looked at we've driven heavy equipment across it several times you know for trail clearing to make our food plots never had any issues the only thing i can say is whoever gets this i would replace the planks on it just so that um you can have a secure you know base to drive over but as far as the framework goes i don't think there's any issues um, like I said, we've driven over it dozens of times, big, heavy, 12,000 plus pound equipment, never any issues. I don't think there's going to be any issues, but, um, I just, if I were buying it, I would just replace the planks on it just so, you know, you never feel like you have any issue, but yeah, for sure. That, it could you it could definitely so, use a, uh, I don't know, a uh, cosmetic makeup job. Oh yeah. It looks, sure. it looks a little rough at the time being, but that stuff's pretty easy to fix. Oh, absolutely. And you know what? It's one of those places, if you're looking for a secluded place where you can go and kind of get away from things, maybe build a cabin, do some great fishing, deer hunting, I don't know of a better place, really. And it's a blank canvas to the point where you can do anything you want to it and make it your own. That's what's cool yeah. about it. So if someone is more worried about the bridge than that, is there, I've bought properties and bridges and they never bothered me, but <clears throat> they, they can have them like tested or who would they talk to to do something like that? Yeah, very easy to, um, you know, get a hold of. Uh, an engineering company. Um, a lot of those places have structural engineers in there that will come out, they'll do um, an inspection on it just to see if it's you know sound and uh, sturdy enough. They can also do a load bearing test to see what you know kind of weight it can handle. But like I said, I mean, we've taken um, heavy equipment, you know, Bobcat over there, the biggest Bobcat they make with, you know, timber cutting attachment on it, no issue. So, you know, other than taking commercial farm equipment across it that may be a little bit heavier than that um i really don't think you know you can get much bigger than that so i don't really think there's going to be any issue for anybody that takes it off right which wouldn't be a um i don't think that would ever happen i mean even if you converted some of that stuff in order to plant food plots back there it's not a property you're going to get a 16 row planter back there i mean you're talking exactly. utility tractor stuff like that right Exactly. I mean, you can go in and, you know, enroll some of that in tillable, but with, you know, the size of it, you're not going to need the big commercial equipment. You can go in with, you know, a decent sized planter or a drill um, and go in and, you know, plant something and you'd be just fine. Yeah, which is what we use on 90% of our stuff anyway. So, okay. Well, cool. Well, anything else that I missed on this one that we need to chat about? No, like I said, it's, um, it's one of those places that, uh, like I said, I've said it before, but it's one of the coolest properties I've probably ever been on as far as the diversity of it, you know, the, the cedar forest, the year round Creek that borders it, the big giant trails, the lakes, the food plot potential, and just everything about it just is really cool. And I think it's something that uh, has been overlooked by some people. So it's definitely a must see. Cool. Um, and I can vouch for that area. We saw that John Buck farm. I don't know if you remember that, which would have been North of this. Uh, so kind of like North, east or northwest of Astoria. So between Otter Creek, the John Buck Farm, um, I think there's a, another guy we know that owns property around it. And man, those guys are just all around there shooting back giant deer. So that area in general, um, if you're a deer hunter, it's an area you want to be in uh, for the most part. And that's not the only one. There's a few in Fulton. There's a few in Knox. Um, but this is one of them. But that's, that's fair enough to say, right? Absolutely. Okay. Well, cool. Well, um, we'll wrap this up. This is uh, going on a little longer than I thought. Um, try to keep these around 15 minutes or so, but, um, well, cool. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for listening guys. And, uh, Matt, let's try to catch up and do one maybe next week on one of your, you know, one of your other listings. Sounds great, man. Thanks. Okay. Thanks for listening guys.